Hey, lucky enough to be in the shop today. Working on a couple of injection pumps. Got this uh, inline pump together. Got a Bruiser Master took apart. Got to take another one apart. Try not to get the parts mixed up. That's what most of the parts look like in your uh, Bruiser Master rotary pump when you get them apart. It's a pretty simple thing. Ain't much to it. I don't have it completely apart either uh, in here. But uh, it's a preliminary disassemble. <laughs> Got this one over here. We're going to do. I'm going to get both of them apart and order parts and then uh, get ready to put them back together. This is what goes wrong with 90% of the little injection pumps here. Uh, governor ring neoprene it uh, that's what it looks like new it goes here uh, on your part of your rotor this goes on in and it's attached to this this is your governor weights and uh, goes through these little pegs here um, it, ah, it gets a uh, real brittle and uh, dries and turns to black and just disintegrates and makes a bunch of debris in your pump. This is the old one here. Uh, the diesel fuel they make nowadays is really hard on them. So they make an upgrade kit. Uh, it's kind of a in a sealed unit. I'll show you what that looks like. It's a little more expensive but it'll save you having to get your pump rebuilt in a year and a half. <laughs> anyway. Well, I guess I'll get to getting this apart. I'm going to take the cap off. You see all that that black stuff down there? That's the uh, That's the old pieces of the old pieces of the old governor ring there. And what it does is all them little pieces will go up and plug up this is a ball valve inside here, your return line, and it'll won't let the fuel flow through and it'll make too much pressure in your pump. And for some reason this pump cannot pump fuel when it's got too much pressure in it and that's why <laughs> when that goes bad when the governor ring goes bad and plugs up that your tractor or your machine your engine will run for a minute or two and then stop and you let it sit a while and then it'll restart and run for a little bit it's because it's built up too much pressure in there so and you got to take it apart and replace that governor ring yep i replace that governor ring. That thing in there is the real booger to get out. You can't really see it too good, but... You use this. It's not exactly a Torx bit, but it's... I don't know, like a splined thing. It's really hard to get that sucker out without busting something. It didn't used to be until they changed the diesel fuel. Instead of being a lubricant, it's a corrosive. What one of my that's how one of my viewers put it. He put it well.
wrapping it a little bit might help jar it loose. We're lucky it got loose. Usually, a lot of times, this will split before it comes loose, and then I gotta get down there and actually weld something on that through that hole. Weld something on there. I got a thing I weld on there. I weld this on there <laughs> through that hole, and then I get it out. You can see more pieces of that uh, decomposed governor ring. Yeah, you can see plenty of pieces inside there. Debris. Sure, most of you know how these pumps work. There might be one or two of you that don't. So, this is your cam ring here. It's got these bumps on it. And this rotates. Got these rollers. These will slide out, and then when it hits this area, it pushes them both in. And uh, let's see if I can get one of them out of here. Inside there, there's two plungers. Inside there, as you can see, and that's where the fuel the transfer pump which on this end cap pushes fuel into into that chamber and pushes those plungers apart and pushes these rollers out pushes these rollers out and then as it rotates it hits these and that pushes them in and it pushes the plungers in and that's how uh, the fuel is is pumped it's forced at really high pressure into the line and through your line to your injector. Now the uh, you also have <clears throat> a rotor distributing it. This rotor goes around side there and lines up at the holes that are where the injector lines hook up to and the the ports should be lined up when you squeeze in so that the high pressure fuel can come through whatever line is lined up and go to your cylinder but you all already knew all that I'm sure You want to know how to turn it all the way up, I can tell. I just know some of you waiting for me to tell you how to turn it up. This screwing this in farther will turn it up, but it ain't going to get you much. It will get you some. That puts pressure on this leaf spring thing here and in the center of that. It opens that up and makes it so that these rollers can come out farther and so that there can be more fuel inside there when you when they do squeeze them together that's what turns it up but 
It won't get you much. Get you a little bit. Okay, you win. I knew you wanted me to tell you some little tricks to get a little bit more out of it. But you'd have to take your pump apart to get them to do what I'm going to show you. If you take this leaf spring out, you can grind this edge thinner. That will allow it to ease move farther. And uh, see if I can pull one of these out here again. You can, you can take that roller out. And you can grind the edge of this down, I don't know, 15 thousandths, maybe a little more, 20 thousandths. Not sure what you can get away with. That will allow that to go, come out even a little farther before it contacts that edge of that leaf spring. So, just a couple little tricks. Hey, I'm having a run on doing these little pumps. Um, got another one here. I got to do. It's off of my my tractor, the 3150. It. Uh, been giving me trouble for a year or so. But, uh, finally got so it wouldn't restart, so I had to do something with it. Shoo! Look like we're gonna have some. Hot Sunday weather, so I'm going to go cut some hay down. Some cow hay. I'll catch up with you later. I'm going to put some of my homemade fuel in the 4030. Maybe it'll keep the uh, tank from rusting so quick. You'll see. Look like the spiders made a home here. <laughs> Hadn't been that long since I run it. Got a good crop of spiders. They run fine on it, so got everything cut down down there. I'm just gonna keep on running on this uh, good home brewed stuff. I think that's the way to go. Hey, it's time for another episode of He Man's Helpful Hints. We're having some company over this weekend, and uh, so now it's time to. Finally getting around to do that painting your wife has been after you do for about the last five years. And because uh, you don't want people to see how you really live. But uh, don't waste your time scraping paint with the old time way with the putty knife or, or get you a sander out or anything. There's much better ways to do that. This is why they make power tools. Every tool for the correct purpose, the correct purpose you use every tool for. Got my weed eater here. Clean, clean as a whistle. You know that my mind. Now I know what you're thinking, Bill. Why in the world are you using an eco-friendly electric weed eater? Well, I, I have seven or eight gas-powered ones, but after three hours of pulling the ripcord and not getting a sputter, I finally broke down and got me one of these. And it does a job.
One hint though, you shouldn't use these things improperly. Like, don't ever try to shave with it. I have not had good experience with that. But anyhow, I gotta get to clean these up so I can slap some paint on there. Hope this has been a helpful hint for you. Catch you later. You ain't helping none. Ain't figured out no shortcuts on this part yet. I'm working on it though. What if that thing will spray paint? Hmm. Worth a try. <laughs>